we're talking about crafting connected courses or workshop for DML 2016 and why don't our conveners uh, introduce uh, yourselves? I'm Justin Reich. I'm the executive director of the Teaching Systems Lab at MIT, um, and I teach a course called Massive, the Future of Learning at Scale. And I'm Alan Levine. I don't have a job title or affiliation. I'm kind of a, a web geek itinerant who uh, gets to work with people like uh, Justin and Howard and uh, in higher ed tech, and uh, I love being connected. So what's, uh, what's going to go on in your, your workshop? What excites you about it? So connected courses are courses which uh, open people, which take place on the open web um, and allow people to connect with one another within the course and they connect the course to wider communities beyond. Um, so the goal of learning is not just to enrich yourself and not just to enrich your classmates, but to enrich other communities that you care about. Um, and uh, we think this is a pretty exciting model for the future of higher education. And so in our workshop, we'll help people think about how you would design these kinds of courses, how you would think about the instruction in these kinds of courses, how you would build technology infrastructures that make these kinds of courses possible and to help induct the people in our workshop into this growing community of folks that are experimenting with these kinds of connected courses. And they, um, they do take a little bit of finessing or art to put them together. So I think originally the title was Creating Connected Courses, and I threw in the, the crafting idea uh, because from experience, and Justice, Justin knows this, it's not some technology that you pull off the shelf. It's things that you have to put together, and there's parts of it that can feel messy and it is somewhat of an undertaking to do on your own and we saw some people do it in connected courses uh, when we ran that uh, which will be two years ago and so this is a kind of chance to actually start and assemble the pieces and get some practice hands-on and probably connect with people who are going to be trying it about the same time. What do you now think of most of them? Work with people who have, we've, designed, we've designed connected courses for learning experiences that happen synchronously over a week that we want to have a connected environment around. We've designed it for semester-long um, college courses. We've designed it for quarter-long courses. We've designed it for entirely online courses. And people who teach in lots of different face-to-face -face online blended learning environments um, with this, these kinds of approaches have been tried in lots of different contexts and are, and are promising in all of them. Um, so people who teach in a lot of different kinds of settings should, should get excited about joining us. What do you think are the main components of a, a connected course and, and why? Well, generally it's the distributed uh, structure of it, which to me, you know, always, that it mimics the internet, that there's not one place where the course happens, that there's sort of somewhat of a hub, and that's, you know, the parts that we're going to teach people to build but that people participate in their own spaces. It could be, you know, primarily it's blogs, but you're able to connect into other uh, sources such as social media um, and other things which you can sort of feed and connect content into the space. Um, but in that space, you want to do more than just have a pile of content. So you want to be able perhaps to, to build some context around it, some structure from different ways that people can navigate what, you know, can be an overwhelming large amount of information. I think, you know, I've been doing this research on um, students who take MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses, and one of the sort of disjunctions that people are running into is that teachers think they're building a course, which is the sort of sum total of information that people need for that course. And students are taking these courses not as a single container, but as one node in these larger learning ecosystems. So what I get excited about with this is to say, well, what if we intentionally, we know that students are treating our courses as one node in a larger ecosystem of information. What if we're really deliberate about building our courses as one node in a larger ecosystem, where as educators we don't say, here's everything you need to know and I'm going to make sure you get it, but we say there's a whole wealth of different pathways for learning about this, and I'm excited to be your guide and to help you find your way down these different pathways, and I also know that there's a ton that I can learn from you and from pathways that you've explored that I haven't. 
um, and we can be more equitable, we can create more space for people to contribute their interests and passions, um, and that's what's so exciting about these connected courses. So it's, so it's thinking about the technology infrastructure that makes that possible, and then it also is thinking about the learning design, um, which makes educators feel like they're playing this really important role, but a really different role, and one that uh, gives students a lot more agency and a lot more voice um, and a lot more opportunity to co-construct the learning experience with us. And there is, you know, there is something about that role because it's this mixture about um, designing the course. Um, so it's not completely devoid of any structure, but also with enough looseness that some of the things can happen that you don't anticipate. And, you know, I don't even know if I can sort of... Ex Oops, we seem to have lost Alan for the, for the moment, so... Alan comes to us from a remote hideaway in the mountains of New Mexico, and uh, but you will get to see him live, um, not in the remote mountains, but in the beautiful campus of Irvine, California, when you join us at the Crafting Connected Courses workshop. So you can think of that as a cliffhanger um, for uh, to, to be able to come to us in Irvine and hear the rest of Alan's sentence um, fully fleshed out live and in person. Uh -huh. One wonderful segue, wonderful save. Um, I know this is going to be a, a, a good one, and um, I'll be there. So, awesome, Howard. We'd love to have you. Great. Okay. Thanks so much, Howard. Really appreciate the chance to um, share what we're up to and looking forward to having a bunch yeah. of folks. Thank you.